Welcome back. Uh, today it's going to be an exciting video where uh, a long time uh, thought process was going on to review about my uh, ownership experience where uh, it was about 9,500 kilometers done in about four months period. So I thought, you know, this is the right time to share my feedback and input about the Scrambler 400X. I've ridden in most of the terrains like, you know, uh, long touring I've done close about four to five uh, different states. So the uh, things I love, certain things I do not like about it. So do watch until the end you know let's go to the topic triumph you know they have not compromised a single thing on the design definitely i would give uh nine out of ten for the design aspect and the riding poster is absolutely great so people who are eight five eight and above and definitely a gift definitely people who are five eight and below definitely 400x may not suit you guys the height plays a major advantage and the seating posture is absolutely beautiful on long rides even 800 850 kilometers you know like i don't feel tiring because of two things one is because of the seating posture and number two is suspension which makes this bike a better combination for me so in terms of suspension definitely 9.5 or 9 out of 10 is for the suspension when you talk about braking front brakes being given as an organic brake the old school brake for example such terrain you don't require a sharp braking where organic brake is beautiful and when you go on a highway with 100, 120, especially on a group ride. The play in the brake is especially is good in terms of uh, the centered brakes. Uh, still, I'm a dilemma, so I'm planning to upgrade um, to the 400 uh, brake. But uh, braking, I would say 5 out of 10 because braking for a standard of Triumph definitely really, really poor because it has got close about 38 horsepower. You know, off roading definitely struggles, stops, it breaks. But when you talk about the standard 1 out of 10, whatever we talk about, I would say. 50-50, 5 out of 10 is what I would give for the braking. So in terms of engine, uh, the spec specs are there, available and online. Uh, definitely a powerful machine. Uh, the pickup is amazing and uh, the gear ratio is absolutely nice. On the 6th gear, from 60 to 120 or 130 or 140, without changing gear, without doing anything, you know, you can just zip around. So in terms of uh, the engine, the acceleration, the touch, a beautiful work, but that's the catch. Engine performs beautifully for most of the people, maybe 110. Beyond that, vibration is one of the biggest questions people ask. And vibration, when you talk about is that advantage or disadvantage, is basically what type of bike you have come from, what is the expectation of the bike. See, vibration is a part of a character, which should be there in most of the bikes, especially 400cc bike, a single cylinder bike, vibration be there. But is it manageable or not, is where the matter comes. Still about 90, absolutely butter smooth, different character beautiful anyway between 90 to 110 you will see a very light vibration which will be there in any bike for the matter the moment you cross 110 the vibrations start and as you go on you know 120 130 140 you can feel the vibration but when you're geared up fully with your riding pants shoes the vibration you will not feel that but if you are going on a ride in which world especially in india 110 is a safe speed comfortable speed 110 and 120 and above and definitely not a comfortable speed maybe you will do here and there but continuously you will not be doing 120 that is for sure so vibration it is a pro and the con depends upon what you expect from this particular bike so i feel tested this bike at about 140 150 155 not very consistently here and there to test the machine i feel yeah it is giving you a warning that you know i should not go beyond a speed the silencer the silencer note is amazing uh, this has got a dual barrel exhaust and the thump uh, and the note because i come from a background where you know i was riding a honda cb350 where it is known for its engine note and also i was three to 900 again you know the beautiful twin exhaust so i thought will i will i be disappointed on the exhaust note definite 8 out of 10 was what i'll give in terms of tire why for only india you give mrf i understand there is a cost cutting there is a competition but definitely at least you could have given an option to upgrade to the better tire what has been available in the european market definitely these tires are not reliable on wet condition and off-road like this what has been there in the uk market you know i think it's uh, available in the ktm 390 so on the tires definitely a disappointment i would say five out of ten is for the tires because already we paid some money for the tires if there is an option for us to upgrade during a purchase it would have been a great in terms of fuel economy, uh, on a highway uh, with my riding style, I get anywhere between 32 to 33 is what I get. As a city condition, it is like I don't always go bumper to bumper truck. I get about 28 is the mileage what I get at the moment. 
service from the service point definitely the spares at the moment in india is almost available the turnaround time is very quick and the space costing is pretty decent but what is disappointing is the network so i am from chennai india we have got two service center and any of the service center I have to minimum travel about 35 kilometers is one bad thing number two is quality of service what we get from the service station as i said there are two service station one is really good and one is very bad we don't want to name anybody but definitely the quality of service station should be really 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 good because we love the bikes and we want the engineers and the team to understand that and do the service accordingly if you really think about leader on this particular segment because the competition is very tight you guys have to think about increasing service quality and the net engine heating when you talk about engine heating again from which type of bike you're coming from and what is expectation depends upon the engine heating you guys will experience where the engine heating is it irritating you is it annoying you no definitely it will not irritate you it will not annoy you engine heat good i would say uh, the way you know the engine heat uh, the, uh, the engineering has been done i would say you know 7 point or 8 out of 10 is what i would for the engine heating so at this particular point definitely a great bike there can be a question crambler in which area is it really strong is matter the question comes in straight competitor nalian a ktm 390 and maybe few other options but this three bikes comes very very close in terms of the competition why is Scrambler? Why Himalayan? Which area Scrambler is really strong is? Straight away the answer from my side is it's all round performance. Is it a perfect city bike? No. You have the 400, you have other categories of bike. They are the perfect mission. This is not the perfect mission for it but you guys can take it. No question about it. I'm talking about the strong edge and the average edge. Yeah. Bike has been designed for it. Bike can be used for it. There are two different. So this can be used but it's not designed for it. That's where. Is it an off-roader? No. It is not an off-roader because first qualification is you require Require a spoke wheel. It doesn't have a spoke wheel. So that itself disqualifies from the off-roader. So it's not been designed for it, but you guys can take for off-roaders. Long touring, two things should be there. One is fuel range, the other one is wind protection uh, criteria for the long touring mission. So in that, this doesn't qualify, but you guys can take it for long touring. No question about it. I'm talking about the strong point. And where it is strongest, it is a combination of a rider, how a rider wants, he will behave. If a rider is adaptable to use his bike for a long touring, he's there. If a rider can take it for a city ride and he's tall, he will support. If the rider wants to take it for the semi off road conditions like this and manage, don't really hit the bike hard, this will do. So, this is strong in terms of all rounder, but it's not strong in a particular area. You, you can decide what you want to do with this bike. So in that particular area, it is really, really strong. In that aspect, based on the rider to rider, you guys can rate it. I would rate 9 out of 10 as a package. Definitely in terms of the design, the wide handlebar, good 200mm ground clearance and uh, adaptability to make whatever you want to do it. It definitely gives you a feel of the big bike. Now, hold on. So we are going to talk about the negatives. When I say negative, it is not a defective. It is a negative where it could have been better or a few things where we can change and make it better. The first problem what I feel. Big topic three, four months back was going on engine stalling. Quick response from Triumph. Engine stalling was arrested. But is it 100% arrested? No. Engine stalling happens when the fuel level is low and at times unpredictable on the second gear. So that is one of the problem which has to be arrested. I do not know why it is uh, on and off uh, getting the stalling. But it is not irritating but definitely a point to be noted. Because you never know until as you know this mission. Definitely the clutch play is very very important. The acceleration very important especially on the first and the second gear when you start uh, fresh on a particular day and the fuel level is low you have to be very mindful about the engine stalling people may comment that no i don't feel the engine stalling yes engine stalling happens there will be also people who will say especially people who take lot in terms of the city will experience engine stalling a lot than people taking highway the second problem is fuel range with the capacity of fuel what you have how far you guys can travel absolutely unpredictable absolutely a crap absolutely waste because at a period of time when it comes to close the reserve which is uh, from the full tank anywhere between 230 kilometers in range it will start giving the orange light alert and then you can see two points for fuel where i'm uh, i'm sure there should be at least four liters of fuel when you can see a range of 70 kilometers more to go suddenly it goes zero why do you have that rather you take it away or make it better so definitely the speedometer fuel calibration is absolutely crap the third thing is speedometer nowadays it's a world of tf so why simple display could have been better the display is very simple the recommended uh, chain loop of, uh, clean for this particular bike is 500 kilometers normally 800 900 is what people recommend 500 is what recommended by the service team also i can feel that why they say so uh chain is not great to the quality that's the reason it has been there most of the things because of cost 
cost cut has been compromised. That's the reason that my complaints all comes against the cost cut elements. And the engine oil, uh, what they change is, you know, I think it is from HP. And I've heard uh, certain service station in North or Hyderabad, they change motor also. 16,000 kilometer change, I understand. We are not confident about the engine oil, what do you give? There should be a better option for people like us, whether we can upgrade to you know, high-end engine oils. Engine oil, current standard is not great for such quality bikes to take in a highways. So engine oil, maybe I would recommend for Motul or any other better brands. Current brand engine oil is not great. <laughs> so one more problem you guys can see, after you do the chain loop, you take it for a spin for a ride. Excess loop, what is there uh, in the chain, flashes to your silencer exhaust light. The LED lights, whatever bike it is, is absolutely poor. And on the 400X, definitely poor, especially with the plastic grill given. It's useless if you go on a high uh, long touring. So definitely an ox light is mandated or else you cannot be comfortable. Uh, in terms of seating, the pillion seat is really hard than the rider. And the pillion seat is not really comfortable for a pillion. Is it comfortable? One thing, it's hard. And two, it's not really comfortable. Uh, because I was, uh, I did travel close about 80 kilometers as a pillion. So the shock ups are good, but in terms of seat, the pillion comfort is not that great. Maybe, you know, if I try something for the pillion to make the cushion better, I will post a comment on it. But at the moment, with the stock condition, the pillion is not pillion comfortable. So this is what about uh, my uh, my 9000 kilometer experience. Uh, in terms of whatever it is, uh, the condition of the bike, the silencers, the shock observers, everything I love it. As I said, few kind of issues about the braking, other stuffs are there. Will I recommend to my friend? It depends upon the purpose. Yeah. If he's 5, 9 and above, definitely I would recommend if he's really interested about it. If you say I want to do intensive off-roading, I want to do only long touring and I'm not comfortable with the wind blast, I would not recommend this bike. But if you guys think that, you know, if you're already looking about this bike and if you're 5, 8 and above, that means this bike is for you. If you say that, no, I think this bike is not for me, maybe an Himalayan, maybe a KTM, no, then this bike is not for you guys. So I leave up to you guys. Do take intensive test ride before buying this bike. Beautiful mission, well designed, definitely has days progress bike will definitely be a market player i hope you guys like this video uh, do share with your friends and comment any questions if you guys have cheers happy riding take care bye